It's kind of like a day at the movies today here on Rockman 7FC, and we're going to start this double feature off with the Toy Story reject himself, known as Junkman. Now, while I've never really cared for this robot's design, the stage that he habits is quite alright with me. It it's definitely fits the trash motif, alright? Anyway, you want to pull out Thunderstrike for these uh, cockroach nests, or rather, gockroach nests, because it takes them out in one hit instead of uh, having to use four Megabuster pellets. Pretty nice. Anyway, after that, you enter an elevator, ten mats drop down from the ceiling somehow getting in here. Don't ask me how that works. Uh, right after this, we've got a branching path, and because you see I have Freeze Cracker out, I've already made my choice on which way I'm going to go in the main run, and that would be the down the lower path, because it is faster, and I know exactly what the second stage in this run's going to be, and oh man, that's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, we got the last uh, circuit plate of rushes for the Super Adapter, but we're not going to pull it out here. The whole point of this run was to do this stage with... This are these stages with Mega Man. Up at the top, we got two uh, Tripropellins, I believe their names are, instead of Monopellin, or Pellern, or whatever I called them in the other vid. Reason for that being they have three cannons on them instead of one. Go figure. After the elevator ride, it's more waiting around, which is kind of a bummer. Also as a bummer is that Thunderstrike no longer has the vertical walls do any damage whatsoever. Because that cannon should have been taken out by that. Oh well. Second to last room features these uh, propeller lifts, reminiscent of Mega Man 1 and Iceman stage, except these guys travel on this uh, pretty clear cut paths here. Whenever a uh, trash cube drops down on them, they get rather angry and will actually begin to shoot at you if you don't take them out quickly. In the case of the last one, it doesn't matter, although please don't make a jump until you've seen him shoot out a piece of debris. And that happened to me just once and fell painfully into a pit. Eee, it happens. What also happens is I made it through another stage without getting hit. I think that's the third one so far, including the first two in the uh, very first video. But enough trying to brag about that, let's go face Junkman, whose most annoying attack comes at the beginning of the fight when he jumps up in the air, and five trash cubes will come raining down from above. If you don't jump then, you will get stunned. As he jumps, you can't hit him. For some reason when he drops down, you can. You're supposed to jump over the debris here that he throws at you. I don't, but you can shake free in time by, once again, jamming on the left and right buttons. Mm, you know, go figure. Again. Uh, after he does a triple hop deal, he'll go right back to his old uh, pattern. Pretty simple to beat overall. I don't see many people uh, losing outright to Junk Man here, as long as you can jump over this debris like I did. But anyway, after that he does one hop, two hop, and then he hops across the room. This is when you're going to get the most damage in, especially considering he repeats it. And you're gone. And hey, you know, I got through a stage finally without getting hit. Unless you count getting hit by the debris like I did. Which I don't, because it didn't do any damage to me. So, there. And for our trouble, we get Junk Shield, which until Mega Man 9 and 10 was the best shield weapon in the series. Rockman 7 FC's version is... not as awesome as the Mega Man 7 one, but it's still pretty reliable. And we're going to find that out pretty much at the start of this stage. From Toy Story to Jurassic Park, here comes Slash Man, and... You know, gotta will myself up for this one. Because this stage brings back some bad memories of my playthrough of this game a few years ago now. Anyway, with a Stegosaurus at the start, would normally be taken out pretty quickly by the Junk Shield in two full passes. And this one is, uh, projectile got in the way. Oh well. After that, it's on to some Super Mario Bros. 2 style platforming. Nothing wrong with jumping on logs. But, there is something wrong with what comes next, because this part here, I had made a slide jump across this uh, 
one platform to the other, and this time, not only do I screw it up once, I screw it up twice and get hit by the second Stegosaurus you can barely see. That's, uh, kind of a bummer. Eek. At least in this run of the stage, I don't go into the menu and try to pull out Rush Jet that I don't have to cross this gap. Instead, I'll let our little dinosaur friend help us out here every time he hops up. Get ready to shoot some pellets because there will be an enemy waiting for you. Except on this last one, we're going to have to jump off because he decides to jump into a bottomless pit. That's kind of depressing. Anyway, once he makes this uh, second jump here, we're going to just climb the ladder, forget the E-Tank, forget everything to the right. Because this stage is going to get a little bit fun once I get up this ladder and pass that Joe that doesn't matter. That's right, Joe, you don't matter. Because here comes King Gajurus, otherwise known as a T-Rex, who is a pain in the proverbial backside for me. Now he can still do his uh, triple shot thing out of his belly, but he's not going to do that. Instead, he's going to throw flames over and over and over again. And I have no time whatsoever to react to it. Well, this is definitely bringing back memories of Mega Man 7 because I am getting hit a ton. <sighs> Up the ladder, things get a little bit easier as we get to burn some trees down. And if you remember in this section, there's a little friend waiting for us if we can get to him. Luckily, we have Scorch Wheel to do just that because on this fifth and final tree, there is a ladder behind it that we would not have been able to climb otherwise. Because Mega Man apparently doesn't like climbing ladders near trees. Hey, it's beat in a cage! And now it's beat not in a cage. Hooray, we got him. I actually think he does damage in this game instead of pulls you out of pits, so... Don't quote me on that, because it has been a few years now since I've played this game. Anyway, we got a few more eggs to crack, and once we've done that, we're at the boss shutter. Oh boy. So, Mega, you ready to get a no-hit clear on this guy? Yeah. That's about my feelings on it, too, but we gotta do this. Let's go take on Slash Man. I'm not so sure if he's hard or just cheap. It's bad enough that you can only hit him twice per pass, but when he goes up top and those five eggs start dropping down, you are pretty much going to get cornered at some point in this fight, unless the RNG is merciful to you. As you're going to find out in this fight, the RNG is anything but, yeah, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Honestly, the funny thing is, you just saw me face Junkman, and the same kind of situation happens where five random uh, objects drop from the sky. In that case, it was uh, the debris. But again, the thing about that fight is you have the full screen to work with. In this one, you do not, and that makes Slashman pretty dang cheap. I really wish that Capcom in the main game would have given you like a little telegraph, like maybe you see a drop coming in from above, and you can figure out where they're going to drop in as they do. But nope. Instead, you get one of the more annoying fights in the entire series to me. Uh, robot Master-wise, I'm saying. <laughs> We've still got a final boss in this game that's probably going to be fun, too. But yeah, look at over this fight. I'm reminded of how annoying it was in the original Mega Man 7, and yet, I went crazy once again. <sighs> Boy, get me out of here. And we got Slash Claw, a weapon you get so late in Mega Man 7, you will probably rarely use it, because, come on. <laughs> yeah, plot time. And Dr. Light's basically saying the base came by, took our enhancements. He doesn't mention anything about Otto just lying there. That's uh, kind of cruel, Doc. You gonna fix him? Huh? Oh, boy. And with that, though, we've beaten all eight Robot Masters, and we get Wily's handsome mug growling, smiling looking back at us. 
Well, we know where we're going next time, so I will see you there. Nah, just kidding. Let's go get the uh, Rush Jet item on the upper path here first, because you all know I like to go for 100% in my games. And if you don't, you do now. Upper path is pretty dang easy, too, although it has a lot more cockroaches to deal with, at least in the opening section. Once you get up the ladder here, you're going to want to pull out Thunderstrike and hit this uh, generator from the right, so the lift will carry you up on the left. The reason for this is we've uh, it will make it easier to get the item up top here, which of course is Rush Jet, as I'm apparently choking on my own words. Whew! And there it is. Now, rather than just exit the stage right here and now, let's go on up, not get crushed by that. I knew that was going to come when it did. Never got me. And uh, do this little section with the magnets. There's another generator right here we're going to turn on because we want the magnet to pull us up, but not this one. No, 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 no. We want the second one here. Now, you notice if the trash uh, gets hooked onto it, they'll start dropping debris on you from above. But we're going to get out of here with no problem whatsoever, and yeah. Hey, it's probably going to be my only perfect run of the playthrough. So, there you go. We got all the items, and I guess that'll be it. See you next time for Wily. Oh yeah, that guy.